All right, guys, thank you. Welcome to the Next Level Call. Very excited about the guests that we have in-house. Real excited to hear from Conrad and Eric and Ivan. And we've had so many amazing trainings lately. And one of the things I keep hearing from people is um, the diversity with which they get to hear. See, the thing with us is we have so many amazing men and women that are out there accomplishing so much. And you can take away something from all of them. And, and that's what's great, right, is you trying to figure out, because at the end of the day, you know, I was just talking to a new agent, and he said, well, what's the close ratio on the leads? I was like that. I go, what do you think it should be? And he says, because uh, everybody wants to ask a question, they just don't want to answer it. So, well, well, what do you think it should be? I'm just curious. I'm, 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 I'm curious. I'm, he says, I don't know. I mean, 30%, 40%. I go, so you're telling me, I want to make sure I repeat this back to you. They fill out the form. They mail it back. This is the, the we've already have captured the one and a half, two, two and a quarter percent, whatever it is, of people that have said they want it, and you think the close ratio is 30%, 40%. That's interesting. And he stops and goes, well, I guess it's higher. Whoa, whoa, whoa don't, don't. I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say to you is this. When I saw the leads, I was sure they all wanted to buy. All I had to do was make sure I wasn't going to get in the way. So speaking of not getting in the way, let me run some numbers for you. This is week one of September she paid numbers. So I, 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 because we shattered a record, which by the way, coming off of summer, Labor Day, but I want you to hear these numbers, okay? So for week one of September, Family First Life issued, this isn't just life business paid, this business was paid out in week one, $1,816,468.20 in paid life business. Paid annuity business, one million eight twenty six six seven. I mean, we were talking, guys, three, four months ago about hitting a million and a quarter a week, million three, million, and we're now knocking the door of two million in paid life business a week. You know, Mike Sider said to me the other day, he's like, we're gonna, we might issue one hundred seventy five million, right, Mike? I mean, we might issue one hundred seventy five million dollars this year. Our goal was one fifty which means we set our goal too low, we apologize. We're not usually sandbagging on our goals and we made a mistake, we screwed them up. And now we know we're gonna bust through 250 million next year. So it's a matter of what are you looking to do, where are you at, and what part of this do you want to be? So I wanna read these numbers real quick and get the training. This is week two now, submit. VP, 15,170, Tyler T, 15,700, Page L, 16,011, JLC, 16,036, Ivan V, 17,191. James S, 17,394. Keith C, 17,490. Sacramento J, 18,319. James W, 18,322. Ethan T, 18,976. Following eight agents submitted over 20 grand for the week. Amy, uh, I'm sorry, Luke B, 20,200. Amy M, 21,012. Wayne C, 22,076. Uh, Zach T, 20, thank you, Mark, I appreciate that. I'm in the middle of a call, but thank you very much. Um, I get distracted easy. Wayne C, 22,076. Zach T, 22,116. Christina B, 26,500. The following three agents submitted 30 grand for the week. Brittany S, 30,324. Donnie L, 35,892. Ryan P, 46,000. $710 submitted for the week. The following 11 agencies submitted over hundred grand for the week. So here's what's great, right? Mike, you come off of a phenomenal issue paid week and it, it doesn't matter if you don't do anything next week, right? Like momentum is a powerful thing. And people go, well, I'm trying to build a business. You always would say to people, are you trying to build this for you and your family forever or for five days? Because if the idea that you're gonna work, have money, not work, have money, work, not, if you're gonna keep doing that schizophrenic deal, you, 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 as long as you understand you're doing it for your family as well as you, because everything that happens to you also affects them. So why aren't we trying to get ahead? So whatever you did last week is over. It was last week. Nobody cares. It doesn't matter. So these 11 groups did a hundred grand for the week. FFL United, 112, 215. Golden State, 133, 199. Northwest, 144, 167. Maryland, 208, 775. East Coast, 229, 210. USA, 277, 338. Global, 313, 139. West Coast, 358, 770. Tri State, 402, 393. Gulf Coast, 476, 391. And Southeast, 693. So $693,255.
issue paid, personal for the week. Everybody over 10 grand for the week. Brittany S, 10,233. Brian M, 10,274. Tyler T, 10,865. Joseph L, 10,945. Jessica E, 11,260. James J, 11,354. David B, 11,604. Marcy L, 11,998. Samantha D, 12,100 paid for the week. Jermaine C, 12,264. Piotr O, 12,600. James W, 13,859. William L, 14,184. Zach C, 14,448. Zach T, 15,309. Linda L paid 22,579 this week. Kenya W, 26. 342 and Heidi B issued $40,811.24 this week. Real quick, life only producers James J, 11,354 paid for the week. Linda L, 11,550. David B, 11,604. Marcy L, 11,998. Jermaine C, 12,264. Piotr O, 12,600. James W, 13,859. William L, 14,184. Zach C, 14,448. And Zach T, 15,309 paid and only life business for the week. So a couple things I want to say before we get to our amazing guests and, and get you off and running here. I think one of the things that we really started to realize lately, you know, I was asking a bunch of agents this week in a meeting we had, what do you think is our biggest market differentiator right now? And I think we have a lot of them. I mean, people go, you know, the comp and the renewals, and, the, and but everybody, I heard a lot about leads and I heard a lot about understanding um, how simple but not easy this is. You know, it's funny, this one of the things about, I try to explain to people and they go, it seems so simple. And I go, this is simple. It is, it's, you know, my son asked me the other day, dad, can you help me with my geometry homework? And I looked at it and went, no, no, I, I, I can't. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'd like to, I just can't. A, I don't really care. B, you're the one in the class, why am I gonna do it for you? And C, I'm getting frustrated just looking at it, okay? Geometry's not simple. I don't know it's easy either, but I'm just saying it's not. Um, trigonometry is not to me. Maybe it's simple to you. This business, what's great about this business, there are things that are simple to me. Like you go, go up and speak in front of those people and do, I'll, I'll do it. That's simple to me. But a lot of things aren't simple to me. This business is simple to everybody. It's not easy for anybody, but there's nobody that walks in here and goes, man, and this is how we hire, by the way. You have to think about clients. You know, when you're good in the home, it's because you explain to the client verbally and non-verbally how simple this is. You explain to the client how confusing it would be for somebody to ever fill out a form of their own free will, mail it back or fill it out on Facebook, and then go, I'm all set. If you in your mind understand that that makes no sense, then you won't ever try to comprehend it. So the majority of the time you'll be successful. When we're hiring agents, it's the same concept. What I'm trying to find out from you is have you convinced yourself you can't do this? Just like 15, 20, 25% of my clients, if there's a percentage that I have convinced themselves before I got there that they don't need to do this and they've done everything in their minds that, that, that they can to go ahead and convince themselves, I'll move on real quick. Same thing with the agents. If you look at the leads, I always like to hand lead out and say, what do you think about the lead? And wait and see what they say. And what I said was, how many can I have? Because I saw it was filled out, I saw there was personal information on there. I saw there was no promise of anything. That was a big deal for me. There was nothing promised. Like, oh my God, I, you know, it was just, I want to have somebody come out to my house and meet with me. So when I started looking at those, that was my question. When you hire agents, what is their question? I love to listen to people talk about um, what they think or ask about what they say they allegedly want to know because it lets me know where their mind is. Now. Somebody you know, could say, well, they, what, you want them to always be positive? No, I want them to always be realistic and reasonable. I want you in your mind to understand that every single person we got, like America, our goal has been 1,000 apps a week. Mike, if we do 135 apps today submitted, which is not a big day, we'll hit 1,000 for a week for the first time ever. For the first, with one carrier, one week for the first time ever. So, I mean, with all the carriers we got, um, you know, there's some contract come out for some, some new carriers. You guys have seen that. So that's awesome news. And, and, and the VPs and managers that you work with will, will make sure you have that. Um, what I would ask you is, is I'd ask you to, to embrace the simplicity of what we do and to accept that if it was so unbelievably easy, everybody would go out there and make two, 300 grand selling life insurance. If it was so easy, everybody would go issue a million dollars a month with their team. 
but it is simple. And when you when you delve for information from people and they tell you things that are pretty straightforward that you know you can actually do, that means there's no reason for you not to achieve at that level. But it's but it's some work. There's there's no doubt about it, it's some work. But you're going to hear from these guys today and you're going to hear how simplistic their approach is, but listen to them. Take away from what they say. Understand what they're teaching you. And uh, you know, our August numbers, well, here they are. been having these smaller group meetings you know you got to hear from Wayne and Galen recently and now you get to hear from Conrad and Eric and Ivan and and what's neat for me is the different perspectives you know I think it's always dangerous you know I've worked at companies before where one person did all the training now is to think how does he know what everybody like how does he possibly connect with everybody how's everybody gonna do it his way it doesn't make any kind of sense to me so having an eclectic training group um, practicing things that work that may be a little bit different from another and finding, you know, you kind of sit back and go, I can really relate to that person. So I'm going to start with you, Conrad. Um, talk about different. You know, it's funny because, um, you know, my son said the other day, he said, I hate math. And I go, good, because math hates you based on the grade you keep getting. You know, and he's he's smart, but he likes to be like cute. Like he doesn't want to work hard because that's cool right now. You know, so he's debating like he doesn't want to work hard, but he doesn't want to get, he don't want to get, um, how do I say it's nice? And like He doesn't want to get disciplined severely for having under a B. So he doesn't want to work that hard, Ivan, but then he's like, I don't want to be disciplined really bad either. And I don't do timeouts. And I'm still a lot bigger than him. You know what I mean? So like like he so he's gotta be kind of be cool but he's got good enough grades. Um your background is obviously very different than mine. Um what I'm I'm gonna forget. Michigan State. And Michigan. And of course, why not? Why don't you go to bowl? And it was it wasn't much clean here. It was actually. It wasn't actually going my gut. Electrical yeah. engineering. Um, I majored in applied social relations. They're nothing alike, right. you know. Um, I took a class in college called Math for Poets. Four credits. It was the best class ever. I wish I had six. I wish I had sixty classes like that. Um, Conrad, I have a couple questions for you. Um, you know, I'd like you to give us some background on where where you are right now, if you don't mind. Sure. It Thanks, Sean, and thanks for the opportunity to be on this call. Um, and, and before we start, I, I had a question for you. I hope, I hope okay. I can answer it. Yeah. Um, you know, lately, and it's something we haven't talked about, but I've had some of my agents and in instances myself where I've walked into a house and there's been another agent there, or I'm in the house and another agent from another IMO walks in after me, or I'm sitting with someone and they pull out their policy and they have a question they want to call their agent. And whether it's on the phone or the agent that's there in the house or the one that comes in after me, they seem to have a posture of putting me on the defensive really quickly with something like, what are you doing here? How do you counteract that? What's the psychology be behind why they do that? That's a good question. First of all, nobody can put you on the defensive. Only you can put you on the defensive. I mean, so no matter what they say, I mean, it's not like somebody attacks you, then you're defending yourself physically. But from a verbal standpoint, there's nothing you're going to say to me. It's maybe, I might answer you a certain way, but Conrad, there's really nothing you're going to say to me that I'm going to take personally because it's business. This is business. It's not like you're walking down the street and you're arguing over your kids. This is business. Okay, so I'll start with the first one. Um, I've been, I have my license maybe three, four weeks, and you know, I'm trying to make some sales, trying to figure it out, and I go to this appointment. And the lady says, hey, somebody from your office is already here. And I was like, that's interesting because I don't have an office. So nobody from my office can be here. It's just me selling some life insurance out of my house. So that's definitely not true. So I said, okay, that's fine. Um, so I walk in the living room. It's very like a, like there's a, there's a dining room table that she's at. And then the client is at his chair 
And then this agent has got like a chair pulled up, like a little makeshift table, and they're talking. And she says, uh, you know, he said he's with your office. And I was, I walked over nicely, shook his hand, said, hey, nice to meet you. I said, well, we don't work together. I said, but nice to meet you. And he said, you know, he said, hey, I, they're all sad. I, you know, I took care of them. I, I thought you were from my office, which of course he didn't. But so they're all sad, and I appreciate you coming. I said, that's no problem. I appreciate you. I'm appreciating me. I said, you know, no problem. I said, what I'll do is I'm going to have a seat real quick and just sit back and wait. Guys, I'm glad you have somebody else here. I think it's always a good idea because if you have two people there, it's always a good idea to get two prices. If I'm already in that position, that's always a good, a good idea. So it's a good idea for you to go ahead and get a couple different options. I'll just sit here and wait. Um, let him kind of go over. I think what a good game plan is, guys, if it's okay with everybody, is he just gives you the best option he thinks fits your needs. I'll listen as you go over your needs, and then I won't make you go over them again. Then I'll just give you my best option. And if his is better than mine, just by all means, I'm not going to be offended when you ask me to leave. And the agent's like, that's definitely not going to work. And he got very offended. And I was, and the, I, I'm very non confrontational but I'm like, and, and the client's like, no, that actually makes some sense. Just give me what you got. And he gives them this crazy program, this IUL thing. He got to ask for it. And I just kind of said, that sounds good. And he went through it all. And the guy was like, so this is the time. I remember, I'll never forget. He goes, this is the time where I'd probably get a signature. This is the time where I'd probably get a signature from you. And the guy's like, I said, well, wait a minute. Hold on. We all had an agreement, kind of a gentleman's agreement that, I, you know, and I looked at his wife. And she's like, yeah, we did. We had an agreement. Like, we're all going to wait. And I'm going to show you the best option I got. And then you'll make a decision. And he was like, yeah, that sounds good. So I kind of said, excuse me, you know, I got to kind of move now. So my chair, I was in the recliner, you know, because there was only other place to sit. So I was like, you can sit right over in the recliner. And he sat down and, and I said, listen, all that stuff he's talking, I'm sure it's great. Um, I didn't follow half of it, to be honest with you. I mean, he started talking about the company's liquidity and their holdings and their, I, I just kind of, unless you want to buy the company, I don't know what that was all about. I, I just was, I was a little bit confused. I'm not trying to be rude. I said, also sounds like you fill out a form that said you want a mortgage section. And you wanted to get all your money back because I heard money's important to you. And that one that he's offering you is, is, an, is an investment kind of product, maybe kind of really didn't understand it all. But you just wanted to make sure your wife, because you have six kids, can stay in the house. Like 100% it's okay. So here's how we'll do it. Boom, boom, boom. Here's Bright America does this. It's only 100 and whatever. It's 80 bucks a month. Get all your money back. Here's the amount of money back in 30 years. Um, you don't have to go through all that other stuff. And um, I just need to grab a voided check and driver's license and sign. And, and he bought it, you know. Um, but I think he bought it because he got a, he got defensive. I didn't get defensive. I don't get the, you know, for me, there isn't anything Ivan you're going to say to me that's going to make me defend. I just, because that's on our part, Conrad, and it's normal, by the way, it's human behavior, right? We get, that's what people try to do, right? They ask you questions because they're genuinely interested in the answer, trying to mess with you. When somebody says, what are you doing here? That's not, they don't want the information. They're trying to mess with you. And you go, I have an appointment. Um, but I appreciate you asking. What do you, you know, what do you, but it's not that, you know, people go like, I tell him this. I'm like, that's weird too. I, I don't go boss him around or act like it. It's not a movie. You know, I just go, you know, I'm just, just, they asked me to come out. So I'm here. So if there was already an agent, that's what I would do. You know, if an agent showed up and I was there, I feel pretty good about what I do, Ivan. So I'm really not too concerned about what they're doing. I'd probably take the exact same approach. Hey, by all means, if you want to have a seat, I, because the minute I start getting offended and I get emotional, I lose. All the clients trying to figure out who's got the best business acumen and the most professionalism. People don't like, we don't like this. None of us do. If I go to the doctor and he's like, and I think there's a problem in that, I'm like, whoa, 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 I want a new doctor. Like, I'm scared, you know? When I go to, you know, sometimes you go to school and you, you get some, you know, you go through these meetings with the teachers and one of them's like, and here's what's going on. It's like, okay, slow down. It's just biology class. It's okay. He didn't hand an assignment. Everybody's, he's not going to be a biologist either. It, everybody just, Relax, because we don't like that, Conrad. That that emotionality makes us nervous, and the discoloration of our face, and the way we act, and the, it sends all that. So I guess the first thing I would say is we have to get over ourselves. We have to get over ourselves. Um. So if if they're there, I have no problem sitting with somebody. I'm not going to sit there and ban. And if they start bantering back and forth, I'll go. You know, listen. My mom taught me a lesson. If you roll around in the mud with somebody, you both end up dirty. I'm just going to stay here. Whatever he's going to say. I'm, you guys, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm not going to banter back and forth. I don't think you're looking for that. And they're not. And they're like, oh, he's more mature than you. And I go, but I'll just sit and let him finish up. And I'll go, or let her finish up. And I, but I'm not going to disparage her. That's, I'm not going to. Um, if I'm sitting with somebody, I have to call my agent. I go, Conrad, listen, you know, um, she and Liz, I say, guys, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. And I don't want you to take this the wrong way. If he was your agent, he'd be sitting here. And we both know that. I mean, one of you might know it more than the other, but we're both 100% sure if he's going to take care of your life insurance needs, he'd be sitting here, not me. He filled this form out because he's not done that. And if you, by all means, after I go ahead and get it for you, you're obligated to feel like you call anybody you want. I feel good about what I'm going to offer you and put you into. But us sitting here to call somebody who's not here to go over something they're not going to see, 
he's going to want you not to do it just because he's going to want you not to do it. I'm not a fan. I just, I want to help you get covered. So this was about you protecting your family, right? Yeah, okay, so why would it call somebody who's not here? A, let's see if you can even get something. I don't even know if you can. Let's see if it's going to make sense for you what we put you into. Then at that point in time, you want to parade it around and show it to every property and casualty licensed agent out there that doesn't sell life insurance. By all means, you can. <laughs> but I try to stay where I'm at. I mean, I'm not going to sit down and go over your homeowners and your car insurance because it's not my specialty. This is what I do. This is who I am. That's how I respond. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah. very non conference I just don't think this is, you know, a lot of people, they start telling the story and they want to entertain you. And I did this with him and I didn't do anything that age. but sit there. I didn't banter him. I didn't bad mouth him. I didn't push. I wasn't trying to be a bully. I'm not a bully and I'm not going to get bullied, Ivan. That's just where I end up on it. I'm not a bully and I'm not going to be bullied. And I'll even say that too. I don't care. So I'm like, well, the, I don't know what you're, what you're trying to verbally like push me around. I'm just, you're just getting, I'm just, I'm just here, man. You know, I think when you're 18 years old and driving down the street and somebody, you know, screams at you, you want to kill them, you know, ah! and I've worked real hard to be like, eh, you know, they're beeping at you. My son's like, they're beeping at you. I know they're doing that. I'm like, oh, they're pretty mad, but, and I haven't done anything. You know, but what are you going to do? I mean, just got to. So I think part of that is we have to get over ourselves. We have to know that this is a business and business is never personal. Business is never personal. And if we can get there, then we can conquer about all you need. Same thing in hiring. It's not personal. You know, we do. We get, you know, somebody asks a question. Well, what is it about your company that makes it better? Well, number one, I wouldn't finish asking questions. <laughs> number two, I didn't say anything. You put words in my mouth, but I have to ask you something, Conrad. You know, I learned a long time ago, and I, I found it to be true. I validated it for years. People ask me questions because they want the answer. They're trying to intimidate me or mess with me, and it appears you're trying to mess with me. What have I done to you? And I shut up, and I wait. And now I kind of pull all the wind out of yourselves because you want me to be higher than you. you. You're here, and you want me to go above you and go, well, here's what we do. Why? I, I don't do that. I yank. I, my job is to suck all the emotion out of everything. It's about my kids. Buckle up because I'm coming, and I am emotional, and I'm focused, and I'm ready. But business, I sit back and make businesses. I might be frustrated by something. It takes me a little couple weeks to figure out what to do, but I'll figure out what to do. You know, so I think we need to make sure we always carry ourselves better. You know, we don't hire that way either. This company said these terrible things about you. I go, well, we talk about just ourselves. Because if I get on the phone and I have not tell how bad company X is, that's just a lack of character on my part. If my recruiting model is how bad you are, that doesn't say anything about the company I am. Just because I call and disparage you and try to mess with you on some level what does that say about me? It says whatever I have, I don't feel very good about because my only recruiting method is to dog you. I go, you know, Conrad, I, I'm not going to speak. I don't work at that company. I'm just going to talk about how great we are. And I do feel like we're great, but I'm not going to go into that back. If you're looking for that drama, like if you want this to be a Jerry Springer show, you might want to go there. I'm not doing that. That's weird to me. They seem to know a lot about me for whatever never worked here. Well, I guess that makes sense, Sean. Yeah, that's kind of like, hey, look over there. Don't look at me. <laughs> hey, don't look at our company. Look over there. I mean, we have enough of that nowadays. I have to read it on Twitter all the time. I'm I'm tired. I, I don't I don't need to see any of it anymore. I don't even watch the news because you know it makes me I, I can't even, I can't even get through it. So um, I know it's too long an answer to your short question, but um, that's great. Um, Conrad, as you're seeing agents, what is some of the things? Because we know you can sell a heck of a lot. You trained a bunch. What is something that you're seeing has been a hang up for agents? If I said Conrad, you have a number of agents. What's been the single biggest issue? A hurdle that stopped them from getting to 10, 15, 20, 25, 30,000 issue paid a month personally. What if I, if you had to pick one, what would it be? Their consistency with purchasing leads. Okay. So there'll be, yeah, sometimes an agent will get, uh, will buy leads and they'll make some money then, or they'll, they'll sign up for final expense leads in a county or uh, a, a number of counties and they'll experience a blip, a roadblock, like a chargeback, and then they pull back and they cancel their leads altogether, or they, they, they turn off some of the leads, and, uh, or, or uh, another, one of their agents rolls up to them. They, they pull back, and, and so they stop the wheels of their business from moving. Mm -hmm. And leads are... Leads are what, what do you think causes that? I mean, I know basically that, but what do you think deep, like, what is, in your opinion, what's the origin of that? Fear. Okay. Fear of what? Fear of, um, fear of the unknown. Mm-hmm. Um, well, this is, whatever, it is unknown. Meaning like, you know, Ivan, um, I'm 45, but my son and daughter are educated from um, a lot like I was that many years ago. There's nobody in any of their classes 
and my, I mean, you, your kids might go to different high schools. The two I have go to two different high schools. Neither one of those high schools empower them to, it's not their fault. I'm just saying they're raised to go find themselves a good job. And anything outside of that's evil. And I'm, with all due respect, they're being taught that by people have a job. And and I'm not mad at them. I'm just saying, you know, my, my son said stuff like I have a marketing class and I'll go in there and listen to them. I'm like, this isn't marketing. This is like, this ain't marketing. I don't know what this is. You know, th these aren't business classes. This is just, here's a textbook, write these things. Nobody in there is in marketing. Nobody knows how to mark. Nobody's talking to them about being a businessman or businesswoman. Nobody. Because they don't know and it's fear of the unknown. So they've been the entire time they're in this bubble. And of course it's all unknown. And then we say, because here's why I always tell people about leads. The job you're in right now, you're not buying leads. No, I'm not. Okay, so your job, wherever, whatever you're doing, you're not buying leads. You're not spending any money on that job. No, I'm not. Got it. Okay. And you're making how much? $61,000 a year. Okay. Can you survive on that? Hell no, is what they tell me. Okay. I need you to write that down somewhere. Hell no. Some, some, seriously. I'm not writing, no, write it down. I mean, I'm writing it down. Okay. Got it. Every time you think, man, I had a bump in the road. I need to stop doing what I'm doing to be successful here. I want you to go, I'm going back to my job. And then I want you to flip to that paper and go, hell no. I can't go back to my job. I'm not telling anybody to quit a job. When you're trying to make money as an independent contractor, because here's what's contradictory. Nobody disputes that independent contractors, that sales is the best job in America. There's nobody disputes in this country the highest paid, since the best, the highest paid, I think it's the best, but the highest paid job is independent sales. It's higher than, hey, I work here and I'm in sales. The independent salesman and saleswoman, with everything I keep seeing for the last 15 years, the average income is the highest. Okay, you might read something different, I'm just telling you. And I've experienced it. I have a couple degrees, not from Michigan or Michigan State, but I have a couple degrees and I worked really hard. I thought I had pretty good jobs and couldn't, I had to work like a dog to get to hundred grand a year. And like, there was no way to barely get above that. So <laughs> I know you can come in here and not know what you're going to make two, 300 grand. So I, I know how quick it is, but Conrad, they're fighting it. They're fighting what they think is true. They're fight The fear of the unknown is really, I know this really well and nobody's ever told me I should do this. And it's like, okay, well, what are you trying to do? Because at the end of the day, it's that crossroads, right? I'm not happy where I'm at, but I have to go ahead. And, and the risk isn't really a risk because if you can't get the money back in the leads, you're really trying to screw it up because these are, you know, people need help. But I think it's just one of those things that I think it's more what you're saying. They have, you know, a couple of people say no, one cancels, and it's like, I know I shouldn't buy leads. And what's weird for me is I never took advice from people that weren't making money. I mean, even when I was really young, I never, ever did it. And it's like, well, my uncle asked me, Huh? Doesn't your uncle still live with your dad? <laughs> like, I'm not trying to be mean, but, and he's now your financial advisor. I'm not trying to be mean, but let's talk to people. Now, if he's going to make a bunch of money doing what he's doing, go work with him. But why are we talking to people that aren't in the business and taking advice from them? Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, what, you, what are you going to be issue paying a month in December, Conrad? Issue paying a month in December? Your is, team. My team. Yes, sir. My, my team, the goal is 500000 and uh, and I'm still looking at that for, for 2018. Do you think you can hit it? I think I can hit it, yeah. I think you can too. It's a matter of are you willing to do anything you have to do to hit it. And I think that's the deal. You know, you sleep less, you work harder, you're trying to put yourself like with Galen. So that's what, you know, like, I, you know, for my birthday, I'll be on some island celebrating because I'll have the money to do it next year. You know, and that's the deal is, and still making money, you know, which is great. So, um, well, I appreciate you. Thank you very much, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, you know, I think when you look at what Conrad's doing and, and you think about, yeah, and it's so nice. I had a guy not too long ago, and he was talking about, I'm just not a salesman. I'm like, I got to have him call Conrad. Like, because Conrad's like, I just, you know, my wife got a license and bothered me to get a license. I don't want to sell anything. I just want to get a license. And and to watch what you've done and how much you've transitioned, how much you've changed, um, I appreciate it, man. So, appreciate you too, Sean. You got it, buddy. Um, so, you know, Eric Anthony, I, I, I've known Eric for a long time. Um, you know, so long that my, my son calls him Uncle Vern. So I think that, I think that's a good thing. He's I know it's a good thing. Um, he, um, you know, it's funny because, you know, you had a job making six figures, working like a dog, 100 hours a week, wasn't going to go from 1 to 150 to 2 to 250 to 3. It wasn't going to happen that way. And the hours weren't going to come down either. So the income wasn't going to cra go crazy. And the hours weren't going to come down dramatically. Um, and... You know, sitting here in Connecticut, like, what should I do? I'm like, well, I don't know. There's plenty of opportunity. I'm going to move to Texas, you know. So, um, which is, you know, I know kids are older and they're in school and the whole deal, which is cool. But um, 
I, I'd love for you to, you've been in sales, not, never had been in life insurance sales until working with us. Um, but I'd love for you to give everybody, I mean, you have quite a few new people working, some that are having success outside of leads. What is something else that you see that newer people are mastering? Because you you got the volume coming in. What do you see that they're mastering or getting better at or they're addressing that's allowing them to be more successful in the field? Well, first of all, thanks. You know, I always appreciate coming up here and you pair me, paired the meeting up with some agents and, and managers and people. That, and you guys wore the same shirt. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and I, I haven't and, missed out and, the and uniform. Uh, you know, I, I always know that I'm going to, if you're going to put us in a room together, I'm going to pull from something. So I learned from Conrad and I've been out there crushing it, but I appreciate it. But, um, you know, some of the things that the ones that are seeing more instant success are doing, and I say instant within the first 90 days, becoming that elite producer. Um, and I think it's because I kind of just back off. They're, they're, they're reaching out to others, um, finding folks uh, in our, in our uh, company that they relate more to. Because uh, there's nothing worse than them having to just listen to me train. Because uh, you know everyone can't relate to everyone the same. It's like you talked about Conrad. He's Conrad for an example. I have an eight, uh, one of the agents I work with, Adam. Uh, he's a lot like Conrad. Like you, you had met him, and he's so, so more softer spoken. But and I would relate to him like him. So I think that they're they're plugging into what what's out there. You know, um, all the new trainings we have, because it's like. <laughs> Like, I'm not the best at anything, but you want to learn how to dial, you can listen to Dom, you want to learn how to sell in a home, you got Frankie, you got Mark, you got, you know, it's like, they, we have so, there's so much out there for them uh, to be able to plug into, and, and I think, um, also, it's our, it's our leads, it's, you know, and I know, and I will listen to Mike Killamette, and he'll talk about, you know, when, when, when he started, and the leads, and when you guys started the company, they weren't, they weren't there like they are today, and and I've been around for a little less than two years, coming up on two years, and it's even it's even different then. Mm. I moved to Texas. I was I would just take any of that. I'm like, okay, cool. There's like 18 leads a month. I'm like, awesome. That's because mm -hmm. I didn't know. And now it's like, um, so I think that you know, it's just showing them that it can be done by introducing them to the to the to the world of people that are doing it. Well, you know. But you also have to have the ability to get out of the way. That's just what I think for people is, you know, I, I was talking to a guy the other day, and he's like, well, you know, what do you want me to do with them now? I'm like, I don't know, they're having success, and they're talking to these people. You don't have to do anything. Like, I'm not being mean. Be there for them. But, you know, one of those things where if they have success, be happy for them, and it's because they worked hard, and if they're not succeeding, then it's because they're not working hard enough. So don't take, again, I always tell people, be careful if you take credit for their success. You have to take credit for their failures, too. I don't want to, that's just... Keep it moving, but you have to understand that. And also, after a while, I don't care who it is, man. You know, Conrad, I mean, it, you you know, it's like your kids. Somebody says the exact same thing that you're like, and you know, they have a crazy good relationship with my kids. I'm like, dude, I said that. But I they hear me all the time. So I have to go so-and-so said or talk to him or her and see what they say because we need that third-party validation. Um, and I also think, Eric, obviously – they're in a place where they want to succeed. I mean, that's the thing with people is you can't make them want to succeed. So the reaching out is, hey, I'm tired. I want to get better. That's all that is. That's all, I'm tired. I want to get better. You know, um, I'm in the home and I'm trying to figure out how to get better. Okay, well, I've talked to you about a bunch of things. Let's see if there's, if there's trainings. Have you listened to all the trainings? That's the other thing. I mean, the trainings for me, and I always listen to all of them. And it wasn't because, listen, I didn't change something every time I listened to them. I had quite a bit of success in the field. But I knew that there were other ways for me when I listened to them that there were agent I was agents I was mentoring and some of the stuff that was said in there, I'm like, I should try that. Like I'll never forget the financial inventory. The first one I heard trying to was Linda Lempasso. And I was like, Wow. And it wasn't like, wow, because I just the way I'm wired, I'm not I'm not you, Conrad. You know, I'm like, you got this, here's this, get your money back, and write how much you're getting back. That obviously makes sense to you. How could it not? Void a check, driver's license today. Yeah, that'd be weird not to do it today because the insurance company definitely needs to pay for it. So I want to think about it. That would be weird since you already filled it for me. Come on, guys. Let's, let's be honest. Come on. That's, I'm just not the financial inventory. That's not my deal. Everybody's different. And I started going to the agents I was working with. Hey, try this. And they started using it, killing it. I'm like, oh, my God. Because I just wasn't, I wasn't thinking enough through of what are other tools out there that people can use that I don't necessarily use. You're going to say things I don't say and vice versa. That doesn't make you right or me wrong or you, you know what I'm saying? Are you wrong or me right? It just makes us different. 
Um, your team's issuing how much a month now? Uh, we did 175 last month. Okay. And how many writers? Uh, 23 it was. Okay. So a little less than 10 grand a month on average mm -hmm. per agent. What do you think you guys will be doing end of year, like in December? My, my go we'll do 350. Uh, I think that's not a, that's okay. a realistic goal. Now, that's a double. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you won't. I'm just saying it's a double in a few months. What do you think is, I believe you, but what is, just so I know for everybody else, what are some things that are happening that's going to allow you to double? Um, well, we, we, we've talked, I've, my agency was 95% mortgage protection. Mm -hmm. So if we continue with the same amount of mortgage protection leads and business and we add final expense along with that in agents, I don't think doubling is a problem. Um, you know, we, it's, I wanted the four times for the year which was 75 to 150, mm -hmm. 300 was my goal in the beginning of the year. Now that it's the growth is exponentially, it should, it should happen with mm -hmm. hiring and, and adding final expense. That's, I mean, I've never, I was so blown away at Sophie. I'm just like, you have so many leads. And I feel like, well, I've been waiting on these. I'm thinking, I just, I then I'm, you know, who am I? I'm, I'm going to run the company and I'm blessed to be in business with everybody, but I don't know what everybody's single lead flow is. You know, I started talking to Sasha. She's like, oh God, we could hire a thousand agents tomorrow, put them in the field. It'd be no problem. I'm like, Seriously, we probably do three or four thousand. I'm serious. Like we just put them in the field. We have enough with call-ins and telemarketing and Facebook pilot and mail. And I'm like, God, Lord, there's such an opportunity out there. Um, well, I got no doubt you will, and I think it's going to be a uh, good finish to the year. And I, I'm very proud of you, man. I really am. I'm proud of what you've done. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of where where you're going and and what we're doing. It's helped us with the other people down there as well. Give us a presence in Texas. So, uh, which we so badly needed. And that's the funny thing. You know, Conrad, Eric's like, where would you go? I'm like, everybody else seems to be pretty darn big in Texas. And we just didn't have, you know, we just, we had some agents here and there. And, you know, I'm like, what an opportunity we got to be able to go ahead and, and, and grow it out there. So, um, thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. Um, Ivan. Good, sir. I'm doing good. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks, First of all, thanks, thanks so much for inviting me here. You're welcome, man. It's been a pleasure to have you. You, um, you know, I was saying this to Ivan. You know, Mark's been screaming about you know Ivan's and and, and Mark is. Um, if you're on a football team, Mark's on your team. If you're winning by thirty, he's screaming and fired up. If you're losing by thirty, he's screaming and fired up. So you don't know if you're. You know, he's almost can come. You don't know if you're, which is a very good attribute in business. You know what I mean? And um, he's like, man, Ivan, you got to, and I'm like, I, and I'm sure he's right. I'm like, I'm sure he's right. I mean, uh, your numbers. I'm like, well, he sells a lot of insurance. So I definitely want to meet him and help out in any way I can. And then anybody that's been around you, did a ride the stars me. And then, you know, one of the guys called and said, man, I just, this guy's really, really focused and sharp. And you need to do this for your wife and for your child. And that's, that's cool for me. Um, could you, since I think this is the, is this the first time you've been on the next level call at all? Yes, sir. Okay. You haven't any, any calls at all? Business development, nothing? I've trained a couple times. Through tri Marks. On the tri-state. There you and go. And Central with Brian Mendenhall. So this is your first time on the big national stage. Okay. <laughs> um, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, like when you joined us, um, how long have you been with us? Uh, it'll be one year in October. One year. And did you have a life insurance license prior to meeting us? Yes, I'll, I'll be... I'll have my life insurance license for two years in October. Okay. And I don't want the name of the company you worked at before with us, before us rather. Um, but how much were you selling? How much did you sell in that year when you're with them? Uh, not even 50. I want to say right about 40,000. About 40,000. And you were there full time for the whole year pretty much. Yeah. You were doing I, other stuff. But well, I mean, I was doing other stuff. Obviously, it's Got impossible it. to survive on that income. Yeah. Got it. Your first full year with us, how much are you going to issue pay? <laughs> like, I mean, that's the thing. I'm just saying, like, but this is what's cr I don't say I can't. I'm sorry. I can't have a laugh. I don't even have to be a numbers guy. I know that's ridiculous, right, right, you know, right. but 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 what's crazy is, Ivan, how many people are out there issuing 40, 50 where they're at who are really good and really want to work hard and really like people and don't even know they can go from issuing 40 to 450. It's crazy, right? I mean, it's it's a life changing deal. Now it's how many people can we put in the position that you're in, so you can have a phenomenal life changing deal financially for you as well, where the money's just coming in, we're building an agency, becoming. Because I always laugh, people go like, "Well, you build an agency over there. We focus on building agencies." I go, "Nobody at your company issues over ten grand a month. Who's teaching anybody? To, I'm not being mean, but who's teaching them to sell? What better man or woman to work with and be mentored by than somebody issuing twenty, thirty, forty grand a month?" Because you sure as heck know how to do it. And if you know how to do it, 
can you tell me how to do it? And if you can tell me how to do it, can you tell me how to tell somebody else how to do it? Um, what are some things you've done that you've learned here? Whether it's from training calls, Mark, Brian, anybody, I don't, you know, the calls you've been on. What are some things you've done here that have allowed you to be that successful this fast? Well, I'll start with uh, lead availability. Of course, that's the number one thing. It's a bloodline of, of the business. So without it, you could not make too much. So with my previous company, I've been cold calling, tapping into the war market. Uh, to make some sales, and uh, it's pretty hard to do it, Sean. If uh, essentially you you bothering people that didn't ask you for Correct. help, that's you know that's and I think that's the number one thing. That, that was number one thing for me. Of course, uh, training and mentorship is thing number two. I want to say because I mean you 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 absolutely have to get around people that doing what you want to do. So if uh, but I mean to, to tell you the truth, that's not really what I wanted to do. I didn't even know it's possible. And, you know, when I was thinking about joining Family First Life, I've done some research. I've been listening to podcasts and I've, uh, I've checked out glassdoor.com. I'm like, that could not be true. This guy's a lying. Those numbers are not real. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like. But you almost have to come check it out then, right? Like, if that's not true, I got to go prove it's not true. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to explore that. It's, it sounded too good to be true. So, but, uh, you know, not having leads at all and, you know, started dialing age mortgage protection lead, leads like that was, that seemed like uh, heaven, you know. Mm. <laughs> I went from no leads to $4 leads or $8 leads, whatever, whatever they cost, but age mortgage protection leads. So people filled out that form. About a year ago, that's that's. I mean, I worked those right in the beginning, so mm -hmm. that was like, man. I so you you couldn't believe it. You had people yeah. actually filled something out. Yeah, and, and they, they did it a year ago. I'm like they, I, I called them. I made a few calls, and I'm like, wow, I have a couple appointments already. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's weird. And that I mean, I didn't. I mean, I knew there were there were H leads. Yeah. Later, I learned about what they are exactly. But I mean, that was a game changer for me, Sean. Well, and it's funny, it's almost like I, I wish I've been sometimes people could start off without lead. You know what I mean? I remember I would come in, like, you call your family members. I'm like, you call my family members. <laughs> Thinking about life insurance for me, they all know me. It, it, that means there's familiarity. I'm, I, they, I, know, I, I don't have a big family, number one. So how many people to start with? B, I have a lot of people who probably won't qualify. I, I, I'm not for anything. So, no, what are, give me some leads, you know? And, but it's because of your experience that when you came in and got anything that had a signature on it and a, and a warm body when you called who said, yeah, I'm, I'm Tom. Yeah, I filled it out. And whenever it was, I filled it out. Yeah, I have a mortgage, 100%. For you, isn't it funny? Here's what strikes me in this massive industry with information sharing the way it is that there are actually agents working at companies with no leads. Because the chance of success, in my opinion, this is my opinion, with no leads is none and none. In in middle American life insurance, this isn't like I can write one big, huge annuity once a year and be happy. To you to make a living with, hey, how you doing? Marry me? I'm your long lost cousin. Let's sit down. Life insurance. Hey, go to the mall. Sit there and wait for people. I'm, that's, that's for, I would drive me crazy. So you had leads. What else was, from a sales training standpoint, what was something you learned here early that you were like, God, I didn't ever think about, I know you didn't have leads before, so you had leads that changed everything for you. But what was something early on that you learned about sales and life insurance sales here? Well, number one thing, the phones are 80 to 90% of your business. You gotta, you gotta treat those days very seriously. You gotta let everybody know that those are your two working days, bother me tomorrow, but don't touch me today. Mm -hmm. Gotta dial the phones, so I gotta schedule those appointments. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was number one, but when it comes to the in-home training, it's second to none. I mean, that's just crazy. I didn't know a lot of these things. I mean, I, it was for me, it was just kind of, kind of being newborn again and mm -hmm. learning things all over again. So before, I had a I had a binder with two products, Term and IUL. So <laughs> I mean, we we all know here in the room that IUL is not the right product for everybody. Correct. Right. So I was, it, it's crazy, but I learned IUL before I learned anything else in, in the life insurance industry. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was told by my manager, 
uh, don't get me wrong, I, I, I'm grateful to him no doubt. for my life that he introduced me to the to this business, right. but he told me, hey, you go and you sell IUL to everybody. <laughs> Even though they haven't asked for any of it yet. Exactly. So, and I had a binder and I had two options for people and, uh, you know, here when fa in Family First Life, I, I really learned how to analyze, pe you know, our clients' needs, you know, how to really help them in a good way. And uh, how not to be confused about about closing the deal because they ask for help. You know what's funny is um, I think that's a big part of right home training the the the, the posture right the presumptiveness because when you tell people, man, you just go there and literally tell them that you know you're there to serve him and you take control of an appointment right. That confidence comes with that presumptiveness and that presumptiveness comes from we have leads. And the comfort comes from the fact that a client goes, oh, he or she is presumptive and is in control as they should be. Let me sit back and answer the questions and go ahead and see what they're going to put me into for a product. That is the way it's supposed to work because we do have every product you can imagine. We have everything together because you don't know what they're going to need. You don't know if the person's 54 and has medical issues and can't get a term product or return a premium. So, Ivan, I really appreciate you, buddy. I appreciate getting getting here. I appreciate the training and I appreciate being part of the company. I appreciate you, Sean. It's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be a great run. And... Uh, I'm really excited for where we are, where we're finishing. Um, IULs and annuities have been massive for us when, they, when they're the right time. So, Mr. Ruggiero, it's all you can do. Hello, everyone. Sean Ruggiero, Next Level Call. This is part two of why indexing. How does indexing work? What are the benefits? And why our clients need it? So uh, just a quick review, in part one of this two-part series, we showed you how indexing works. We showed you the first three of the six benefits, or excuse me, of the five benefits. With, if, with indexing, with an FIA, there are no losses. All gains are realized gains that are locked in, and you're never dealing with unit depletion. So if you haven't seen... Uh, the first part of this training, I encourage you to go back uh, to Family First Life on their Facebook page, to Facebook Live, and you'll be able to see this. So, we're going to talk about number four now. No fees. Now, that's a big one. NerdWallet.com reported that, now let me read this correctly, a millennial, okay, so let's say it's someone that's 30 years old, that was working... Average salary, saving for their own 401k, over the course of 40 years, if they had a 1% fee, that's it, just 1%, they would lose an average of $590,000 during the course of their life. That's a lot of money, $590,000 during the course of their life. So why are we pointing out no fees? Well, the simple reason is this. FIAs, fixed index annuities, have no fees. Now, I've always said that, and inevitably I get someone that says, wait a minute, what do you mean no fees? I just uh, wrote an ascent and it has a rider charge. Or I did the Performance Elite Plus and there was a fee or a charge. There's a big difference. See, if you have a rider charge, first, it's optional. Second, you get something for that. So if you want, I'm going to use the Performance Elite plus from a theme, if you want to be able to take out 10 to 20% versus 5%, if you want a 12% bonus versus a 9% bonus, depending on the state, then you can pay a 0.95% fee and you will get something for it. It doesn't work that way in the traditional stock market world. If you've heard me train, you've heard me say this over and over again. Stocks and bonds, they make money off you, okay? XYZ brokerage, whoever it might be, do you think that when you invest in a certain stock or mutual fund, that they also invest, match it, and both of you, uh, you know, uh, hold hands and hope that it goes up? Absolutely not. The risk is all yours, and they make money through fees. Now, I'm not saying people shouldn't make money, but most Americans, in fact, a Phoenix marketing study proved this, most Americans have no idea they're being charged fees. So let's look at that. I challenge you, 
talk to your clients and ask them. Now be careful. We can't tell them to buy or sell any certain stock. We're not trying to. We're not trying to advise them on mutual funds. But what I'm telling you is public data, public information. It's consumer awareness. You are allowed to talk to them about this. And ask them. If they're challenging you, if they're pushing back, beat them to the punch. Say, one of the reasons I'm going to recommend an FIA for you is because there are no fees. Now, there are some optional charges if you want enhancements, if you want additional benefits, but there are no fees. So can your broker say the same? Ask them this. Does your broker charge a fee? About half do, about half don't. What really gets me is when the ones that say they don't charge a fee don't or fail to mention that there are fees inherent to the mutual funds that they are purchasing. So let's talk about those. Is there a load fee? Okay, now load fee could be upfront or it could be a deferred load fee. But is there a load fee with any of the funds that I'm purchasing? What is the expense ratio? Ask your client to ask them. What's the expense ratio on the funds that I'm purchasing? How much? It's oftentimes 1, 1.25, or even 1.5%. And when they pay that load fee, when they pay that expense ratio, heck, when they pay the broker fee, what are the guarantees that they get with it? Are they guaranteed a higher bonus? Are they guaranteed increased liquidity? The answer is no. Because remember, they don't make money with you like annuity companies, they make money off you. The last one is a silly one called a 12B-1. Any fee that is named after some sort of robot or, or alphanumeric code that no one would re really understand means it's a pretty tricky fee. Now it's usually about a quarter percent. Ah, what's a quarter percent, right? Well, a quarter percent is one-fourth of the one percent. And one percent, according to Nerd Wallet, over a 40-year period, took away over half a million dollars from me. So I think paying attention to these fees is important. And here's the thing that I'll be able to say universally. No client, if they ask their current financial advisor, no client could ask them all of these questions truthfully and have the answer be no. I've never met a financial advisor who charges nothing. I've never met a mutual fund that doesn't have one of these fees, okay? So when we ask them that, we're exposing the fact that there is fees involved in what they're currently doing and what we do has no fees. In fact, I love the base version of the Performance Elite. It's a great accumulation tool. Uh, really great uh, volatility controlled indexing, and it, uh, it does have a plus version, but if you're just looking for safe growth, no gimmicks, the, the, um, the base version will offer no fees whatsoever and still give you a decent size transfer bonus based on the, um, the, the length of the uh, annuity or the state that you're in. Now, the next thing I want to talk about We're gonna erase that there. Number four was no fees. But the next thing is lifetime income. So let's say your client has a traditional investment portfolio. Maybe a 60, 40 stocks bond, something like that. That portfolio, regardless of its performance, let's say we just put it in a vacuum and say, hey, at the point of retirement, it equals $500,000. Ask that client, how do you convert that to income? Well, the $500,000 is going to be dealing with mostly unrealized gains. So the only way they can convert it to income is through selling. They're going to sell stocks, sell bonds to take cash from the policy. Is that cash guaranteed to be sold when the market's up? Or could the cash be sold when the market is down?
See, again, that comes to our, our uh, sequence of returns risk that we talked about with no losses. Furthermore, can you guarantee that this cash will last me for the rest of my life, even if I live to 100 years old, or for my life and my spouse's life? So ask your client, yes, do you have any fees and list those fees for them? But also, how in the world are you going to convert this to lifetime income? What's your plan? What's your plan for lifetime income? Well, we're going to sell stocks. Okay, Do you, does your plan include only selling stocks when the market goes up? No, it can't. Does your plan include not having unit depletion? Meaning when you sell 10 shares of whatever mutual fund you have, how do you plan on replenishing those shares when you're not working and when inflation is eating away at your purchasing power? So the, the, the solution for lifetime income is a tough one. And what's funny is as we accumulate money, as we work towards a retirement, maybe you're contributing to a 403B or a 457 or a 401K, we never really think about how we're going to convert this to income. We just assume that the person that charges us money will figure it out and send us a check. Well, it's not that easy. And anytime you're dealing in that traditional portfolio and converting that money to income, you're dealing with sequence of returns risk, you're dealing with unit depletion, you're dealing with fees, and you're dealing essentially encompassing all those things, the problem and the scare that you might not have enough money for the rest of your life or for your life and your spouse. Now on the flip side of that, let's look at an FIA. An FIA, or fixed index annuity, is an annuity. All annuities can be annuitized. It does not matter if they are an income rider annuity, a SPIA, or a DIA. All annuities can be annuitized. So what is annuitization? Well, annuitization is when they take money, let's say $500,000, and they convert it to a monthly paycheck. Now, that monthly paycheck, how do they calculate that? Well, obviously, they take the amount of money that they're looking at. But how do they decide how much to give them? They do it based on their age. They don't do it based on how much of a certain stock they have. They don't do it based on how much money is in their account. They don't do it based on how the market is performed. They do it based on their age. So all things being equal in this scenario here, if there was a half million dollars over here and a half million dollars over here, this being in a traditional stock portfolio, this being an FIA, if you're 65 years old, you're going to get X. But if you're 66, you're going to get X plus. And if you're 70, you're going to get X plus, 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 so on and so forth, regardless of how the market does. So the older you get, the more money you get to take out. And that money is guaranteed for life, for you or for you and your spouse. And most oftentimes, if we think about uh, the safe max rate, that's the safe, safest maximum rate of withdrawal back in 1994, uh, a, a gentleman named Bengen uh, did some research using back casting scenarios of the market. The safe max rate was calculated at about 4%. Well, if you're 65, 66, 70, those numbers are going to be closer to 5%, 5.5% that you can take out. And it's guaranteed for life. So you don't have to worry about losses. You don't have to worry about fees. You don't have to worry about unit depletion. All you have to do is simply convert it to income, which is a great thing. So if we review here, why are we indexing? Why are we indexing versus giving someone our money and letting them manage it? Well, simply put, indexing eliminates losses. Indexing works with realized gains versus paper gains. Indexing will never have unit depletion. Indexing has no fees. And number five, indexing can be converted to lifetime income with guarantees. I put the infinity sign because as long as you live, you can take that money out. 
So how does indexing work? We showed you that. What are the benefits of indexing? And how should you present this to your client? It's these five reasons right here. If you have any questions, please email us at annuity at familyfirstlife.com. Also, you can follow Safe Money Smart at Twitter. Uh, there's great information that can be sent to your clients. Like I said last week, sometimes if you're telling them the information, they think you're selling them. But if the information comes from a third party, they'll believe it and listen to it. And finally, go to safemoneysmart.org.org and you'll see videos, one minute videos that talk about these things and other things that can help your clients understand why an FIA is the right choice for them in retirement. Thank you everyone. <music>